Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into the Jones and Four show. I am pumped to have you on here. I am your host, Spencer Jones. And uh, we're today we are going to talk about balance, how to balance your life, right? To balance work, you know, chasing your passions, your family, and balancing all of it. But first, before we jump in there, to, if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe to our show, that would be fantastic. And if there's anything you'd like me to talk about, chat about, share my thoughts about, or anything, feedback, drop it in the comments, right? Um, leave a review, let me know, or you can always email me at smj190 at gmail.com. Okay, so let's dive in, shall we? Let's just go right into this here. But first, I need a little sip of coffee here. Just one second. Oh, that's good. Oh, I love coffee. Okay, so let's chat real quick. Balance. What is balance? Balance is, okay, well, we are pretty much all know what balance is. It's not falling down when we're standing up, right? But when we're talking about life and family and passion, chasing your passion's balance, right? Um, we're talking about how can we fit all of the things in that we want to do in our life, how can we fit it all in and still have a happy life? A lot of the times, right, so if we imagine it being on a, um, uh, a scale, right? So if we're imagining all these things being on a, a three-way scale, that we usually put too much weight on one thing, that everything, it, it falls out of balance, right? And then that leads us to being unhappy, to not living our best life, right? To, to being miserable, to being frustrated, to being upset. All those things. All those things are no good. We don't want that stuff in our life. No, we want to be happy, right? We want to have that balance. But that balance can be hard to find. So, um, as we get into the show, I love it if you followed along with this, and this show kind of helps guide you through something that I created to help you, because I want you to live your best life. I want you to chase your passions to the max, but have that balance between it all. So, what I did is I created this whole little worksheet for you. Um, so, the way to get it, the best way to get it is honestly to go to my website, spencermjones.com. Go under the Jones and Four Show, find the Work, Life, Passion, Balance um, show there, right? Click on that, and then you'll be able to sign up, and I will email you uh, this, this worksheet that you can do. So, take a second. What I suggest doing, honestly, is just pause the show for a second, for a quick second. Pause the show, head over to the website, and uh, go grab it, download it, print it off, and, and follow along and fill this out as you're going through. This will be helping you go through it. Okay, and if you don't have it, well, you'll get a good sense of it, and then then uh, go to the go to the website, go to spencermjones.com and get it, right? So it's under Jones and Show, the Jones and Four Show, and under the Work, Life, Passion, Balance um, link there. All right, so with this, right, that balance is this way that how can we fit everything into our life? How can we fit it all in and still be happy and still have time in the day, right? And and do all the things we want to do. The one of the biggest things to know is that it's different. It's different for everyone. Well, the balance that works for me is not going to be the perfect balance that works for you, right? It's all individualized. However we fit it in, however we make it work, it it all depends on us. And not just the the person, right? Because yeah, it differs per person, but it also differs depending the the where you are in your life and not only where you are in your life but where you are in that season in that moment not just life but literally year so if you don't know right i am a high school and middle school choir director and i do the music for the musicals and all that stuff that we do at the high school well during musical season my life gets crazy busy now, musical season for us happens um, pretty much from December, but really hits hard in January through the first week in March. So for those couple weeks, right, it is for months, two months, two and a half months, something like that. It's crazy. I'm pulling in like 16, 18 hour days at work, and um, I'd have church job on the weekends, on Sundays. And so my time to spend at home with my wife is shortened quite a bit. We try to maximize that any time that I am home that we just get to hang out, we relax, we talk, we go out to dinner, something like that where it's just us, right? So we maximize that time. 
And my passion, for many of you know, is being outdoors, right? Is kayak fishing, hiking, camping, doing those things, right? I love chasing those passions, along with the, of, uh, the passion of helping you guys chase yours, right? So with all this, um, it, it, it's hard to find all that time. Now, thankfully, because the musical season happens in the winter months up here in Wisconsin, the kayak fishing and all that stuff isn't really happening because the water is frozen. And uh, I'm personally not a huge ice fisherman, so that timing works out, right? So I can devote more time into the show and family as much as we can to balance it out, right? But then when musical's over and it's springtime and or summertime when I don't have school, right? Yeah, it's family and fishing, right? So the balance changes, the the weights on the scales change because I'm able to it's I'm able to move it. So just from that small example, hopefully you can see how it can change for you, right? So based in, you know, if you ask me how, how my balance looks in in January, it's going to look totally different than how it looks in July, right? Totally different ends of the spectrum, and, and it's different than how it looks in September when we just started school, right? It uh, is all different, and it changes. So know that life is a flux, and you have to adjust, and you have to work through these things. But if we can get you to outline that your your um, your passions and the things that are important to you, if we can get you to outline that and create everything you need to do to create the balanced life that you have for right now, is going to be easier to adjust and manipulate and change for later on when it does need to change to keep that balance, okay? So yes, we're putting in a lot of work now and know that yes, it's going to need to change. Ugh, I know it sucks but you're going to be okay because once you do this work right now, it's going to be easier later on. So the first thing that we need to do, uh, I, we being you in this case, is you need to find out what's right for you, what's what's important to you. So take a little bit, take a uh, no, piece of note paper, or if, if you have um, my the worksheet, right, if you have the Jones and Four worksheet, take the time and answer the question. Think about it. Reflect. Brainstorm. What is important to you? What are things you want to do that are really important? So, you know, family. Cool. You know, is it kayak fishing? Is it hiking? Is it, uh, you know, spending time with your kids? Um, work. Is it writing a book? Is it reading time? I, I, you know, soccer games. Whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What is important to you? Take the time and write it out. Now, if you're uh, listening to this show as you are uh, writing uh, in the, the worksheet itself, pause it, brainstorm, okay? Brainstorm that list. And then once you... So, oh, wait, you can pause it. We can start you back up in a second. There you go. Hopefully you're back with us now, right? So the next step is you want to to label them, right? You're, I don't want to say label them. You want to rank them. You already labeled them. You already said what they are. You need to rank them. What is the most important to the least important thing on that list? This is where it can get really tricky because for some of us, a lot of things are super important, right? And need to be right up there. But do your best to think uh, and, and give it some good time to sink in and see what ones, which ones you wrote, right, things that are important to you, which ones rise to the top and which ones settle in the middle and go to the bottom and write the list. No one's going to judge you for it. This is your list. This is for you. Now, I will say that if you are doing uh, this uh, activity and you have a significant other, a spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, whatever, right? If you have a significant other, I strongly suggest after you rank it, you show your list to them. You're, you're going to ask them to, hey, don't, please don't judge me with this, but I'm just making sure that um, where I'm thinking seems right to you and make sure that we agree on this list, right? So, because you know what, your balance is important to them and they can, and it's important to them and their balance is hopefully important to you. So then you can work it out and make sure that it works together, right? As a family, as group. And if you don't have a significant other, awesome, then um, maybe you have a trusted friend to look at that list, someone that you can confide in and say, hey, I'm doing this, I'm trying to get my life balanced out, can you look at this list with me and make sure that, you know, I'm not missing anything, that I'm not overly, you know, going crazy with, with a certain thing. 
It's a trusted friend, not just a random one, right? A random person or your boss or anything like that. Someone that you could trust because these are these are your inner thoughts. These are your inner feelings that you are putting down on paper and things you're ranking, right? It's very personal. Um, but know that and, and hopefully that they're there to help you out. Pick people that are there who are going to support you, are going to help you, right? Um, and and help you make sure that everything lines up with who you are and what is going to be best for your life. Now, it's just their thoughts, it's their opinions as they're sharing it. Keep that in mind, but hopefully you have those trusted people there to help you out. Okay, so you've brainstormed the list. You've ranked it, right? You put it into order of what's most important to least important for you. And this list could be two things. It could be 20 things. It, it's all good, right? Just make that list, rank it, then talk with someone. Part two of this is to create a schedule. Now, this might seem crazy and the fact that, oh my gosh, I have to create a schedule of what your day looks like, whatever your week looks like. Now, what my suggestion is, is to literally go through your day and write it out for like almost every 15 minute block of your day from when you wake up to go to sleep. This seems daunting. This seems crazy, doesn't it? To think that, oh, now you have to go through and block out all these minutes of the day to two different activities, right? So um, if you have that worksheet, right, that you can get at a website, spencermjones.com, if you, if you go there and, and get it, then you will see how I lay mine out. And sometimes it's by 15 minutes block, sometimes it's by 10 minute blocks, right? I, I know the rough times, how long things take. But if you don't have that, you can get it. Or if you're writing your own, cool. So what I did is from the moment I wake up, you know, I wake up at 4.45 a.m. Or sorry, 3.45 a.m., 3.50, boom. I start my workout. I know brushing teeth. I got to let the dogs out. And he's out there doing his stuff. I kind of get breakfast stuff set up, whatever, so that I'm working out by 4.15 a.m., um, five days a week, um, right? I'm working out the, the school day. And this is a school day in the fall, right, that I'm doing this. So boom, I, I schedule that out. So, okay, that's what a 25 minute block, but I know how long that takes. So by 4.15 working out, my workout is done by, you know, 5.15, 5.25, something like that. It's done, my workout's finished because I do a couple different titles of workouts, so times vary. And then I have my social media time, time to post on fitness groups that I'm in, stuff like that. And then I break it up like that and throughout the day. And for me personally, like my work day, you know, I set 7.30 to 3.30, right, as a school day. And so that's devoted to school, right? Making sure everything's set uh, with my classes, working with students, teaching, all that good stuff. And if for whatever reason I have moments in my day, I have, I have an extra to-do list or task list or things that I'd like to accomplish that I can fill in. But generally, that's a block that's just straight work. Maybe you have a different type of job where you can segment it out a little bit more and figure that out. With this whole scheduling things, know that you, you should plan, first of all, you should plan some time just to chill, relax. You should not be going, you, let me say that again, you should not be going straight through the day without any breaks, without any rest time, without any, like, just decompress, time to decompress, right? You, you shouldn't. So like lunchtime, take a lunch, enjoy it, go for a walk, smile, enjoy the fresh air, take those moments for you, all right? Um, at the end of the day, I'll tell you, so for me, like, um, get breakfast ready and all that stuff, work out, and I make breakfast, then Katie and I, my wife and I, we sit down and we eat breakfast together, right? We try to make sure we, we can eat breakfast together. And then she's a teacher, so she goes off to teach as I teach, and then at the for dinner we try to sit down and eat together. And then it's work time, then I'm working on our shows, right? The Jones are for show and, and making sure all these other things are set for the business aspect of the stuff I love doing, right? Chasing that passion. Or maybe I'm working on a kayak fishing thing or editing videos or whatever it is, right? So that's work time um, for half hour to 45 minutes, depending on the day. And then that last half, or sorry, that last bit of the day, I have an hour set aside just to chill, relax, whether it's um, 
It could be chatting with Katie, playing a game, watching a TV show, a movie, something that we can just relax with, right? And hang out. We're not thinking about work. We're not thinking about school. We're just enjoying each other's company. So make sure you take that time for you throughout the day, right? Schedule it in. Now, some of you might be thinking like, oh my gosh, if I create this schedule and I'm, I'm scheduled to do things every you know, second of every day, every minute of every single day, you won't have any free time. Well, first of all, hopefully you built it in. And then you might be thinking, I'm so stressed, I got everything planned. Well, you know what? You will find out that you'll actually be more productive during this time, that you will probably have a little bit more free time into your day because you've completed tasks that much faster. Why? Because we, we run better on schedules. Humans generally run better on a schedule. So create that schedule, right? Um, force yourself. So, okay, so from this time, for, for this half hour mark, I'm going to, to write this. I'm going to work on my book and do this. Or I'm going to work on my degree from here to here, right? Um, for this hour block, I'm going to make sure I write my paper or research this for, for the class I'm taking or whatever it is, okay? So you're focused. You're determined. You're just like, nope, I don't have distractions right now. Boom, I need to focus because this is on my agenda. This is on my schedule for the day. And same with that, right? We can get distracted. Other people could come and distract us, right? They can come and ask us questions. They can come and um, try to pull us away unintentionally, usually, try to pull us away from what we're focused to do, right? So this is where you have to be strong and say no to them, right? If it doesn't fit with your priorities, right, with what you ranked, uh, and as long as it's not an emergency, right, then, then you say, nope, I'm already scheduled to do something right now. I, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Hold strong to your schedule. If you let other people pull it apart or even let yourself let it go, it's really easy just to, to get laid back and let it fall apart. But stay strong. Stick with it. You will see results. You will feel better. And you'll be balanced, right? So you create this whole schedule for your day and make sure everything lines up right with, with you and, and all that good stuff. So stay true to it, stay focused when you are assigned. Tell those people, nope, I already, already have stuff to do. I know I'm jumping around, I'm sorry. I get excited. So you created your schedule, but like, what do you put in your schedule, right? You put in the things that are important to you. First and foremost, you put in your schedule, I probably should have covered this before, sorry if I didn't. Um, so what you put in first is your number one priority, right? Your number one priority, you put that in first, whatever that is, let's say it's family time. You put in the family time where you know it will work. Or maybe work as first priority because, you know, you have to work or create a job or have income or, or whatever, right? Um, so if that if that's what you need, then you put that in first and then family time or whatever, right? Whatever order it is for you, it doesn't matter to me. It matters to you. So make sure you take the time and, and write down. So your first priority thing that has the most importance to you, followed by the second, third, fourth, and you fill it in. Okay, so now you, you've scheduled out at least one day. I strongly suggest you do this for every day of the week. And you'll find that, you know, days you don't work, you have more time to chase your passions. You can schedule that in. Um, you can, have whatever that is, or hang out with your family, or, or work on different things for your own business, or whatever it is, okay? So you, you'll realize that you have, you'll have that time, that flexibility. Plan out the seven days. Because each day looks a little different. Uh, I'm a choir director at a church as well, as one of my being church musician's uh, responsibilities. So Wednesdays is when we have rehearsals. Hmm, I, I, we, don't, we don't hang out. Um, Katie and I don't hang out because that uh, fits over that. So I make sure that we get to hang out earlier in that day, right? So we, we have that time together. So know that about you and your schedule so that you are able to, to plan it all out and plan it out for the week and then see. So then after you created your schedule, again, now if you have a significant other, I would show your schedule to them and get their input, get their feedback, right? Because it's important that they see it and they understand what your schedule looks like, what you're hoping to do and what your priorities are, right? So they can uh, have that. If you don't have a significant other, you can show one of your friends, your trusted friend they show before, but that's not necessarily as important um, as I would say that showing them when you ranked everything was. Okay, so if you have a significant other, show them. Other than that, you're probably okay. So then comes living it. 
Give it a trial run. See how it goes. Try it out for the first uh, couple days. I would do more than one day. Okay, I would do probably a week, right? Five days to seven days. Give it a trial run to see how it works. And then tweak it as needed, right? You will probably realize like, oh man, I really thought that this would fit in this time frame or I could totally do that here and it's just, it's just not working out. I need to adjust my times and, and change it. Guess what? That's okay. You can do it. You can change your schedule, right? You, it's your schedule. So change it. But remember, please remember what you have set as your priorities, right? What you ranked first. And always start with those and then work your way down because it's it's your life. And that's how you find your balance, right? By fitting in all those things that are important to you within your schedule and and ranking them, you know, by spending more time or less time on them or even getting a little bit. Now, as a little side tangent, I know for some of us, sometimes all it takes, let's say you're just, I'm going to talk about kayak fishing because that's one of my passions, is let's say all it takes is just being on a forum uh, with some other kayak anglers and chatting about something for, heck, even if it's like twice a week, that'd be great. And if I can get out fishing once a week or once every other week, great. So that's what you put in your schedule, right? That you could fit that in, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be an everyday thing, but you're touching on it. And you know what? If you are getting a taste of it and you are are living your life and, and chasing your passions, spending time with your family, getting your work in and doing all that stuff, and it all lines up in your day, because you have it scheduled, you're not going to feel stressed. You're not going to feel overrun, overworked, because you've written your schedule in a way that that you can relax, you can get everything you need to get done, and feel accomplished. Now, another really last-minute thing here, a little extra bonus, is that once you start living it right, stick with it, hold true to it, but know that it's going to change. I already mentioned this. Know that it's going to change over time, and be okay with seeing those changes come, adapting your schedule as needed, and making it work for you for that season of your life, for that season that you're literally in, for that moment, okay? These are just some ways, actually these are, well, in my opinion, the best way for you to, to find that balance, right? And again, if you haven't done it yet, head to my website and download. It's free, right? Just sign up for it. I will email you my, my free worksheet so that you can live a balanced life. Balance is everything. You need balance so that you can make sure you touch on all the things you love to do, and that's going to bring you happiness. That's going to bring you joy. And if you're more happy and you're joyful, you're going to be nicer to be around. Your family's going to want to be around you more. You're going to be, do better at work because you're just naturally happier, right? You're not grouchy. You're not upset. You're not frustrated. You're living your best life. And I want to help you live your best life. I want to help you chase your passions to the max. I want you to be even more amazing. And that's what this is for. So head to my website, spencermjones.com, go to the Jones and Four show and look for the balance link. Go there and get this worksheet because it's, it's going to change your life. I know it will. I know it's going to help you out. All right, folks, if you enjoyed this episode, this show, I would love to hear your comments, your feedback. Write a review for it. Drop a comment, right? Let me know what you think. And, oh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on our next couple episodes coming up because you won't want to miss it. It's all about helping you live your best life, chase your passions to the max, and all that good stuff. So until then, thanks for watching. You are all awesome. You are all amazing. Go keep rocking it. And until then, I will catch you all later.